How's it going ladies and gentlemen? In this video we go hands on with some of the top macOS Catalina features. Be sure to thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. 9 to 5 Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Mac Paul's Clean My Mac X. Before updating your Mac to a new OS, it's recommended that you back up your Mac first. And cleaning your drive is the first step in preparing the backup. With Clean My Mac X, you'll discover tons of apps that you didn't even know you had. And then you can sort and delete them using filters like App Store apps, unused apps, 32-bit apps, etc. Click the link in the description to visit cleanmymac.com for a free download. The first thing that you'll probably notice in Catalina is the new dynamic, or I should say automatic wallpaper. Uh, the automatic wallpaper will automatically transition from daytime to nighttime based on the time of day in your location. I've always loved the default macOS wallpaper, but I think this shot of Catalina Island is one of my favorites, especially the light version. The headline feature of macOS Catalina is the long rumored breakup of iTunes. In previous versions of macOS, iTunes of course incorporated music, movies, TV shows, podcasts, and more, which resulted in a very bloated app experience. But in Catalina, it's all broken up with separate apps for music, podcasts, and TV. The new music app is designed, unsurprisingly, primarily with Apple Music in mind. So right at the top, you have your For You browse and radio tabs, along with your full library of music beneath that. There's also an updated music player that allows you to see lyrics and don't worry, you can still access the iTunes store if you prefer to purchase your music instead. And for the first time, there is a dedicated podcast app. So this has been pulled out of iTunes and it's now its own standalone application, which is great. So this is going to be able to easily sync together with your iOS podcast app. Of course, you'll find your full library with the now playing interface and the ability to browse Apple Podcast directory with over 700,000 shows. So no longer does podcasting seem like an afterthought buried within iTunes. It's now its own standalone application and it's about time. And the last big tentpole feature to come out of iTunes is the TV app, which includes your library of movies, TV shows. You can access your full library, rent or purchase movies or TV episodes with built-in support for Apple TV channels and Apple TV Plus, along with 4K and Dolby Atmos support for certain Mac models. One other big thing that iTunes did that is easy to forget is that it allows you to back up and sync your devices. Now that functionality has been embedded into the Finder instead. So when you connect an eligible device, you're gonna notice under locations, the device name. You can click on that device and then access all of your management features to sync or back up just like you could with iTunes. Like the iOS 13 version, the Photos app received a significant upgrade in macOS Catalina. First and foremost, you find a brand new organizational structure under the photos section. For instance, here you can see where you have the all photos view, you have the days view, which actually hides photos that are duplicates or photos that aren't necessarily important. It will hide those and only present to you the photos that you deem important, uh, just like you see right here. So you can click into that and then view all your photos if you want to as well. And of course you have a year and months view and you have automatically playing live photos and videos in your library. And like its iOS 13 counterpart, the Notes app receives a significant update in macOS Catalina. So when you search, you now get improved search with built-in search suggestions. So you can just click here, search for notes with checklist and it will pull up any note with a checklist. That is really cool. You can also set it to automatically move checked items down to the bottom of the list like that. And you can easily rearrange list items simply by clicking and dragging like this. You'll also notice a new gallery view, which allows you to easily locate items that you're looking for at a glance. And that's super helpful. And the notes app in macOS Catalina also allows you to share folders. So if I just click the little ellipsis button here, I can select add people. And not just that, you can also share folders as view only like this, so only people you invite can view. And the Reminders app gets a complete overhaul in macOS Catalina. So let me show you how to create a new list and you can edit that list by going to Get Info. You can change the list color. So I can just choose a color and choose a glyph. So I'll choose the plant glyph with the green background color and click OK. 
And you can also easily combine multiple lists together into a group. So just drag and drop a list on top of another, rename the group. So there you go, just click the disclosure triangle to hide it away just like that. Now, let me show you what it's like to create a list item with the new Reminders app. So I'm gonna go to my stuff list, just click here, finish review on Saturday. So notice it uses natural language and it will suggest dates based on your natural language input. But of course you can add date, time, location, and flag separately if you wish to do so. So review bike. Now I'm gonna add a date separately. So click add date. And then we'll choose tomorrow and then you can add a time 3 p.m you can add a location you can add notes and you can flag the item if you wish to do so so i'm just going to add a brief note here in fleet tires properly and another cool thing is that you can nest items and create subtask within list so now i have a subtask of finish review to review the bike so if i click the disclosure triangle i can hide it away like that and the new prominently placed smart list feature will automatically organize your items based on context. So you have today, you have all your scheduled items grouped together, and then you have all your flagged items grouped together. Safari and macOS Catalina gets an updated start page. So you can see the new Boulder icons right here. And you also have series suggestions. And this can be items from your reading list or items from a different device. So if I pull up nine to five Mac here on my iPad, it's going to suggest that. Uh, and I can of course click that to open it up just like that. And the start page will also surface other relevant information such as links from the messages app. Another really cool thing is the ability to search open tabs and to switch directly to that tab via the search. And you can now invoke picture in picture mode directly from the audio tab button. So if you're playing a video and you right click on the audio tab button, you can enter picture in picture just like that. A handy feature for quickly surfacing media that's buried within a tab. And in Catalina, screen time makes its debut on the Mac. You're gonna find it inside system preferences. So if you just click on that. And if you've used screen time before on an iOS device, you'll know exactly what to expect here on the Mac. You have the ability to go in and view app usage, the time, whatever limits you have. You have downtime, so you can establish downtime to be away from the screen. So only apps that you choose to allow during this time will be available. There's also app limits, so you can limit specific app categories or apps themselves or particular websites if you want to do that. So you can set daily limits. You can adjust the hour or minutes just by using the little adjustment time section right here below. So I can just say, hey, I only want to be able to use this category for one hour and you can adjust it to minutes as well, but I'm just going to choose one hour just to make it easy. Then click done. And this will enforce a one hour maximum usage time for any app that falls under the creativity category. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to screen time management. There's communication settings, there's content and privacy settings, and more. There's a pretty big focus on security and privacy in macOS Catalina. For instance, you'll notice several additional permissions categories under the privacy section of security and privacy. So there is a new speech recognition and input monitoring permission. So any app, for instance, that wants to monitor input from a keyboard, mouse, or trackpad, for instance, is going to have to request permission first, and you're gonna to have to approve that permission. Same thing goes for files and folders as well, and screen recording as well. So an app like ScreenFlow is going to have to get permission first before it can record the screen. And here's something really cool and very convenient, the ability to use your Apple Watch to authenticate password entry throughout macOS Catalina. So with a simple double press on the side button on your Apple Watch, you get a super convenient way to quickly authenticate within macOS. And another new security related feature is that macOS Catalina now runs in its own dedicated system volume, which is read only, meaning nothing can overwrite or modify critical files. Sidecar is a technology that allows you to extend your Mac's workspace by using your iPad as a secondary display. To access Sidecar settings, simply go to System Preferences and click the Sidecar button. There you'll find the Sidecar setup, which allows you to show Sidebar, show the Touch Bar, configure Apple Pencil, and connect to a nearby iPad. Now, you can connect wirelessly within 10 meters, or you can utilize a wired USB Type-C cable. 
So here's my 12.9 inch iPad Pro next to the 15 inch MacBook Pro and you can see the display works really well. So that was extended mode. Here is mirrored mode. All right, so there we go. Let's go back to our extended display, just like that. All right, and the really cool thing, like I said though, is that this is basically like a wireless external display that you can put anywhere within the 10 meter range, of course. Now, keep in mind, this is still in beta, so it is still quite a bit buggy. I had some problems with connectivity, especially with the wireless connection, but even when using the wired connection, Sidecar has been a little hit and miss as far as connectivity reliability, but that's to be expected. One cool thing is that you get access to the touch bar right there on the iPad interface, and that comes in handy when navigating and controlling macOS directly from the iPad. So if you already own an iPad Pro, especially the 12.9 inch model, this is extremely cool. Just to have that external display that's super portable, you can throw it in your bag alongside your MacBook Pro and have a true two screen setup that is portable. Now you also notice the little sidebar on the side that allows you to easily access your dock, access modifier keys, there's an undo button, and you can access a little floating keyboard like this, which allows you to input using only your iPad. And there's also some really interesting continuity features that can be used here. So here in this case, I have a note open. I'm going to import a sketch from my iPad that I haven't yet sketched yet. It's gonna open up the sketch interface here, the markup interface, I'm gonna draw, and then I just tap done, and that inserts it directly into the note just like that. And you can do the same for PDFs. So sidecar, I think it speaks for itself. This is just the infancy stage of this new feature. I think the potential is just ridiculous and it's really going to help you get more out of your iPad in a whole new innovative way. What do you guys think about this? Let me know down below in the comment section. And lastly, one of the more exciting Catalina features, the ability for iPad developers to easily bring their iPad apps to the Mac. The iPad has lots of games and some key productivity apps that I'd love to see on the Mac. So ladies and gentlemen, what is your favorite new macOS Catalina feature? Please let me know down below in the comments section and stick around for a brief word from our sponsor. 9to5Mac on YouTube is sponsored by CleanMyMacX. Before updating your Mac, use the new Space Lens feature to build an interactive visual map of your storage. That'll help you quickly find the biggest space wasters in the form of space bubbles. That's just one way that Clean My Mac X can help you prepare to upgrade to a new OS. Click the link in the description to visit cleanmymac.com for a free download.